Hey, and we are live. So welcome aboard. Uh, this is the first ever Midwest Tool Collectors Association meet in Texas. Uh, so this is something I've been trying to get for a while, and a friend of mine down here decided to host it. And so we are at the uh, uh, Pioneer Farms and just outside of Austin. So this is a lot of fun. And uh, let me show you a little bit of the farm first where this thing is hosted. And it's actually out here. And so they have all these buildings that they've brought in on the farm. Uh, next door here, we have a blacksmith shop where they have several classes going on. And then down at the end, there's a red barn way back in there that is the uh, wood shop. Um, and here is the old meeting hall that they brought in and we've got tools for sale. So I thought I'd take you around and uh, show you the tools. Maybe get a glimpse of the steers. Uh, they have longhorn cows out back. So, um, yeah, it's not a, a big meet because it's the first one here. So, hopefully, next year and the year after, it will grow, become larger, and hopefully, we'll get some other meets in other places. Um, so, if you want to host one, uh, let us know. Get in touch with the Midwest Tool Collectors, and we can start setting up more of them here in Texas. So, let's uh, let's see what we got going on. Uh, yeah, so let's go through these. Uh, what do we got here? Some blacksmithing tools. Oh, he's got some really cool ads down here. I'll show you a little later, but big stick. Ooh, big pig stickers. That thing's seen some wear. That's cool. Wish they'd done this in the UK. Yeah, there, there's actually, um, uh, there was one in the UK a while ago, if I'm not correctly. I'd like to see more of it. Occasionally you'll see it in other countries. Uh, there are a few things like that in the UK, but we'll see in the future. Um, let's see. Hi from France. Cool. Let's move on here. Oh, that's a cute number three. Check that out. Corrugated. Looking for one that's not corrugated. There's a smooth bottom. I have to come back and take a look at that. Uh, we are just outside of Austin, Texas at Pioneer Farms. So this is a good bit of fun. Box and molding planes. Oh, check out this bowl. Yeah, it is gorgeous. Wow. <laughs> oh, the uh, fence you can put on a joiner so that you can know it's straight or uh, know that it's uh, plumb. It's kind of cool. One of these days I want to get one of those to show it off. I don't use them um, because I've gotten fairly decent at just knowing what it is, but they make it a very easy for someone beginning or someone wanting to play with it. Barrel maker ads, yeah. Check out this old clamp. Beautiful here. This thing also keeping slide adjust the angle here probably works the best when you're oh, yeah. trying to work a a completely That'd be, straight uh, perpendicular to one of them. That would be great for um, doing, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? French fleets. Yeah. So you can always get the engine. Check out this Moxon vise. That is beautiful. Some nice levels. Rasps. Always hard finding a good rasp. Machinist box. So you can dig through here and see what all he has. <laughs> you want a good old Black & Decker? <laughs> Wrench tree. There's an ECE. I love these things with the uh, tongue and groove. Oh, a nice short throw uh, brace. I bought one of those thinking I'd never use it, but it's nice to have on hand. Uh, but now it's the one I use most. It's just a great, faster working. Stanley 55. Ooh. Ooh, in the box. Hey, that's making me happy. Bunch of Miller Falls. Is it possible to buy one of these lovely tools? Well, if you're here, you can buy one. Um, I, uh, I do buy for a few people if they are members of the Midwest Tool Collectors. Um, but if not, I, I don't buy them for other people. But yeah, you got to come out for these. And I have a map on my website. If you go to woodbyright.com backslash tools, um, you can see a map of all locations around the world where I uh, buy tools. Um, so if you want to see if there's one like this around you, go look at that map on my website, woodbyright.com backslash tools. Um, 
Oh, I love these split chisel and uh, screwdrivers. Someday I want to get a nice set of those. Okay, that's cute. In France, you don't find much of them. Yeah, check out these cute little things. <laughs> yeah, in France, uh, there isn't much in Europe, which is kind of surprising. They switched over to power tools much more strongly than central U.S. Plow planes? Fun collection of them. Some more German horn planes. Number fours. A couple really nice compass plans. Look at those. Beautiful. Yeah, you should really see if any of these are around you because they are all over the U.S. and other places. And I do have a bunch of sites um, around the world, so in other countries as well. Anybody looking for hand saws? It's a nice collection. I actually just purchased uh, this one. It's a uh, Atkins tin and saw. I've been looking for a good one. Can you be a member of the tool collectors even if you don't live in the U.S.? Yes, actually there are um, a lot of members around the world, um, some who do travel in for the national meets. Uh, the last national meet we're at, there was a group there from China, there were several from Europe. Um, but yes, you don't have to actually come to the meets to be a member. Um, yeah, and there are um, quite a few. And there, there are occasionally meets in other countries, and um, I'd like to actually see more of that. But, uh, yeah, for right now it's mostly the U.S., but uh, more coming. Just need people to set them up and organize them. A few chisels, pack saws, a set of Nerics. They the torrified. Oops, sorry. Nerex is actually a really nice chisel. I, I like them. Uh, for the price, they're they're really good. If you, if you can't get an oldies chisel, that's that's usually the one I suggest. So let's come around over here. One string of tables. Ooh, now we get into the fun mallets here. Find much in, in much of industrial hand tools in Sweden, old planes. Yeah, check out uh, this thing for cutting that shape. I'd love to know the history of that. Really kind of cool design. And then this hammer, check that out. That's a really interesting hammer. I'd love to know the history on that. Some chasing mallets. Beautiful. Now these yardsticks here, are actually for measuring board feet. So you can find out you know, how wide is the board and then how long is it, it tells you how many board feet are in there. Kind of a, a fun stick. Ooh, here we start getting into some restored tools, seeing what they give. So let's go through some of these. These ones are all a little more pricey, but they're restored and ready to go. Beautiful work. I love the side of that thing. Ooh, a jackrabbit. See, it's a, a rabbit plane, but a jack plane. It's called a jackrabbit. <laughs> I want to get one of those. They're, I mean, there's, there's not a huge amount of use for them. In timber framing, they're great for your cleaning up your, uh, your, your tenons. Um, but it'd be nice to have on hand. Oh, he's got a couple of aluminums here. An A5 and an A4. Aluminum bodies. Those are big collector's pieces. Yeah, I should actually pick up a hammer for Zach and give him something he'd like. Beautiful tools. Here's some scrub planes. Stanley scrub planes. Another jackrabbit. Jack four. Um, the aluminum body planes, there's a bunch of different things for it. 
Um, that one time aluminum was slightly cheaper due to the war effort, um, and that quickly changed. Um, some people like the lighter tool over a steel body. Uh, there's a bunch of different reasons. All in all, there weren't many aluminums made, and so the ones that are are just now collector's pieces, and so that's why the price is so high on them. No, I have not bought a, a Stanley scrub plane yet. I just use a number five as my scrub plane. It's just it's cheaper. These things are, are the price just keeps going up on them. They were like forty bucks, and now they're seventy, eighty, a hundred dollars uh, for a good scrub plane, which is kind of funny. What's the, what is a chasing mallet? Now oh, here you go. Uh, this is a chasing mallet. It's a small head and usually has a bulbous handle on the end, and it's used for doing chasing or steel engraving. Um, and so you could use this large surface, and a small amount of mass with repeated tapping will drive the the chasing chisel through the uh, the steel. And so that's a chasing mallet. Yeah, it's going down farther. Ooh, here we go. I like have to be careful. Of them. they might be sharp. What is it? I don't know if they are. Not. 175 for a whole set of gorgeous carving chisels. Oh my, that is beautiful. How much for the jackrabbit? Uh, there were two of them. Let me go back and look at them. Let's see, where were they? Oh, here's one. Late model Stanley, 195. Um, what do you have on this one? 125 on that one. Then the uh, the Jack Four, and these are really well restored. 210. Yeah, that is a, a gorgeous set of chisels. Nice veiner. Do they have a V tool in here? No, no V-tool, just a bunch of gouges. Oh yeah, here's a, a large, wide V-tool. Yeah, the, the thing about these is you tend to be buying a collector's piece as opposed to a user tool. Um, so they're, they're more expensive than you expect, but they're collector's pieces. Now here's a cute saw. Check out that thing. I have a friend who has one of those. They were made for doing dovetails, but I just, I don't know. I've never, I've never much liked them. Here's a tenoner, or not a tenoner, a dowel maker. So you can actually make a square stock and then feed it through into the dowel cutter, and it will run a dowel as long as you need it. One of these days I want to pick up one of those. Ooh, spoke shaves! Uh, check out this Miller Falls. Love that round bottom. Oh, here it is. I, I only seen a few of these. Uh, they're very hard to come by, but it is my all-time favorite spoke shave. This one, the, the sole here, you can actually take off, and it's round here, and you can flip it over and use the other side, which is flat. So this thing can do either round work or flat work. Just really comfortable, and it is my absolute favorite. I, there, there aren't very many of them, but I love those things. Just gorgeous. That's a sweet doll maker. Yeah, really well restored. Here are all of the dado planes. You can tell they're dados um, because they have a knicker on both sides here so that they can go across the grain. They tend to be skewed because that works a little better for cross grain work. And we're getting tacos today. Then we have, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, 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 timber framing, there we are. <laughs> need to get, pick up one of these someday. I gotta get a slick and a good, uh, a good set of corner chisels so I can do some timber framing. So I might come back and look through these, see if one of them jumps off to me. Ooh, 48 bucks, that ain't bad. Speaking of slicks, holy cow, check out those pretty slicks. Yeah, today most of the tools are really high quality good stuff. There really isn't much junk or rusty here. So the prices are a little bit higher, but that's because it's good quality stuff here today. Now check out these old sergeants. I love the way they look. They're a bit of a pain to work with, but uh, a lot of fun. I love slicks. I need to get another good one. There's some big old shears. Check out those long things. I just bought 
um, a uh, uh, tongue and groove plane. Yeah, a lot of fun to play with. Oh. Beautiful work. Nice condition. A Stanley 80. A couple of compass planes. More compass planes. Man, these are in gorgeous shape. Cleaned up beautifully. Ooh, here's a four and a half. Don't come across those all that often. I love my four and a half. Here's a couple, uh, let's see what they have on these routers, uh, 75 bucks, 125 on the old Stanley, 45 bucks, that's actually a nice deal, 45 bucks. Some marking gauges. Oh, this one I keep wanting to get. I love these Stanleys because the, the screw is back here, it's out of the way, it's great, easy to adjust. I might come back and pick one of those up. Great, great tool. Yeah, aluminum handles. You could actually order these to replace your uh, your broken handle, and the aluminum isn't going to break on you. They won't want a uh, brass Lee Nielsen. <laughs> Fold up spoke shapes. Another 80. Oh, yeah, here's some other Lee Nielsen's. Another five. Cabinet scrapers. Here's a 112. I just bought one of those recently. I want to play with it. A lot of fun for scraping. Bunch of spokes, babes, squirrel tails. Yeah. Uh, this is just outside of Austin, Texas. Uh, we are at uh, uh, Pioneer Farms, so just on the north side of Austin. Okay, here we go. Stanley 45, 50 in the box. Make Stanley screw. What is this? Ooh. Is that a... Oh, that is cool. I've never seen one that's adjustable like that. Hollow auger. That is cool. I have to come back and look at that one. Sidewall planes. So if you're ever making a groove, and the groove needs to be a little bit wider. I use those to clean it up. Um, a lot of fun. I have one of these. I want to clean it up and, and uh, show it off here soon. Ooh, some gorgeous blocks. Shoulder planes. Oh, here we go. Here are all your joiners. Number eight, oh, look at that, 608 Bedrock. Oh, that is gorgeous. <laughs> Let's do an inception here. Look, he's watching live. <laughs> yes, you hope one of them scraper planes. <clears throat> Machinist toolbox. Yeah, it's got a whole series of things in here to pick out. Ooh, machinist square. Let's see, do you have that square set in here still? Yeah. Beautiful set. I love these old cast levels. It's beautiful. Gorgeous tools. Oh, here you go, miter box plane. So this is square and designed up for a miter box so you can actually hold the side here rather than having a tote in the back. One of these days I want to either make or get one of those. A lot of fun for a shooting board. 
beautiful plane. Scrapers. Mint gouges. Oh, here's another Bedrock 607? 607, yeah. Gorgeous. Do you ship to the Philippines? I'd ship to the Philippines, but... Uh, yeah, these are, are bung hole drills. So you get an auger here and it drives the hole into the side of a barrel. And then on the side here, it actually will cut out a tapered slot for the bung. Oops, sorry. An ice shaver. So you can shave off ice for your, uh, for your uh, needs. <laughs> your kitchen. Oh, check this plane out. This is for the top of the barrel, so you can run it around the top of the barrel and clean it off. Let's see, some wrenches. We have some blacksmithing stuff over here. Wooden faced metal round mallets. Oh yeah, here is one for driving in, so you can hold it off a long ways and have someone else pounding back in there. Let's see what else we got. Some beautiful old braces. Yeah, check out this bit connection. So you'd make your own bits and adapter. So put a, a repair on that. Oop, why is that out of phase? There we go. Sorry about that. Oh, check this out. This is a, a stamping mallet. So you've got all the numbers on here, rotate around, and just take it and then stamp in your engraving. Bang. And then go to the next number and bang. Kind of a, a cool all-in-one. The account for some reason. Oh. Some other stamps. German planes. What is this? Is that a plow? Yep, plow plane. It's kind of cool. A spindle drill. Great for doing clock working. And if you ever watch it, uh, not switch and lever, what's the channel? A click spring. He uses one of these quite a bit for drilling brass. Huh. And so you put the string on top here, and you run this lever up and down, and it twists around there and drills this back and forth, kind of like a spring pole lathe, and you use it to auger out um, through metal. Keyhole saws. Actually, just purchased one of these. Looking forward to uh, putting it to use in a couple projects. Yeah. Brass braces. Ooh. Infill. Is that boxwood? It looks like boxwood infill. Wow. Not in the best condition. Don't know what happened to that. Oh no, that's pretty. Infill shoulder plane. Let's see, now you got these uh, measuring wheels, so you can set it up. Like here is the zero point. Actually, no, this one it can move around here, so you can set up a specific amount. It runs around, and it is a measurement of whatever it is. And so sometimes on the the field they create one of these, and it would be the measurement for the field, whether or not it was two feet around or not. Uh, it was two of something. And so you could actually use it and say, I'm four long or I'm three long um, running down. It. it doesn't matter what the increments are as long as it's always the same on the tool you're using. Yeah, in Spain, there are, it's harder to find things over there. There aren't as many, aren't as many good things in Europe. I have a few places in Europe listed on my website, but there isn't a whole lot. 
good old wooden spoke shave. The brass sole on there. Um, for this event, if you go to Midwest Tool Collectors, MWTCA.org, and you go to events, um, and then you go to local events, and then you go scroll all the way down to the area that includes Texas it's listed there. Um, they don't tell anything about where it is. They just say there's an event in Austin. Here's the contact person. Um, and you have to be a member. And then when you're a member, then you'll get notifications about it. Um, but this one was a little bit of a last minute. It wasn't announced until about a month or two ago. Um, so it's the first one ever in Texas. Yeah. Let's see what else we got. Oh, wow. Check out that brace. Wow. Brass. A solid brass brace. That is really cool. I, I've never seen one quite like that before. That is beautiful. Old egg beater brace. A bit. Oh, yeah, this. Western Union cable puller. So this opens up, you put the cable in here, and it yanks on, and then you would attach this to a mule or whatever be pulling the cable, and you could pull the cable through for the Western Union Telegraph. Um, really cool little tool. Here's an infill. No. Some more wheel measures. Oh, check out that box. Well, that is pretty. Look at the uh, detail work across there. Oh, here's another spindle drill. So we're coming close to the end, so if anyone has any questions or they want some, something you want me to look at, um, let me know and I'll go back to it. But I think that was about it. It's a, it's a smaller meet this time. There isn't that much in here, but it, that's why it's the, the first one ever in Texas. Um, so I'm hoping that there's more like this in the future and uh, we can get more maybe in other places in Texas and hopefully next year this one grows and becomes something bigger. Um, yeah, it was only announced about a month or two ago. Kind of, uh, kind of late minute for how these are, but hopefully next time. Uh, let's see, were there any last minute questions? Um, say hi. hi. You're live. We're live? Yeah, you're live. <laughs> how much are the Jacker planes? Um, they were, I think, uh, like 200, 225 for the two of them here. And they're in absolute pristine condition. Uh, let me look. The two jackrabbit planes. Uh, this one is 125. And let's see, this one over here is uh, 195. Gorgeous condition, really well done. Hey, babe. Wish you were here. My wife's up in Illinois and I'm down in Texas. Cool. Uh, so I think that's about it. Unless anyone has any last minute questions, we are having a lot of fun here. And I'm probably gonna go back and pick up a couple things. So, so far I have my new tenon saw. Looking forward to sharpening this up. And it's a, an Atkins here. Let me show you this. Uh, whoops, zoom in. If you look at the Atkins logo, it's two A's. Let me see if I can get a better image of this. Let me take it outside with a little bit of light. This is something I like about these. You can see how they're, they're a couple A's overlaid each other. But if you flip the logo upside down, it then becomes... Come on, focus. It becomes my logo. WW. <laughs> so that's why I like them. I collect a few of them. Yeah, I know. Right now it is... Uh, yeah, it's it's a freezing like uh, 60, 65 here today with a nice breeze running through. So oof, yeah, it, it, it's bad out here. But let me take you around and show you a little bit of the Pioneer Farms here where this is located. Because not only is there this here, but then there's also the whole Pioneer Farms. And we'll look out the back window here. And I don't know if you guys can see, but way over there, 
longhorn steer. And uh, yeah, let me take you over and show you the blacksmith shop. They are doing a few things. I think they have a knife making class over there today. Um, or this weekend, actually, they're doing a, a long series on knife making. Uh, so traditional knife making, no, uh, no grinders, no sanders. And you can hear today they're working on the file work. And it is really, really cool. They have a series, I think, eight anvils in here, eight forges. Yeah. So here's the blacksmith shop. How would you love to come here and take a class on blacksmithing? That is gorgeous. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. And then they have, you know, they, uh, they have a store over there. It has a very large fire pot that goes about 12 inches by 8 inches. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Sorry, I was reading the comments. They just moved in this building. All of these buildings are ones that they pulled in. The one where the tool meet at today, this is an old meeting hall, um, originally called the Grand Old Opry. Um, and they, uh, they pulled this in. And then way, way over there, there's a barn on the other side of those trees where there's the woodworking shop. And just a, a gorgeous location. Absolutely beautiful here today. And... Um, yesterday I did a dovetail class here teaching, uh, well dovetails, <laughs> we had six people or so um, come for that and that was a, just the right size group, a good time. We were planning on doing uh, four hours, ended up doing, I think the last person left it around nine hours, um, so it was a good day. We did the dovetails and then we kind of said, you know, what else do you want to learn? And we ended up doing half blind and full blind dovetails and carving and um, different ways of doing things and really really a fun time so um, let me look through the comments and see if there are any questions I missed joinery in the roof of the barn here uh, I'll go now well, this one um, this barn is actually just um, normal building they they moved out the sides and then built a new roof on it uh, they have some over here where they're actually showing um, log framing and then the old farm where the woodworking's at, way down over there, um, is an old timber-framed barn. That one's kind of cool. Cool. Well, I think that's about it. So I'm going to wrap this up, and I'm probably going to go in and buy a couple more things. And if this is something you want to do, uh, if you want to see if there's anything like this, you can go to my website, woodbyright.com backslash tools. Um, down at the bottom of the page, I have a link to where you can find out about where all these meets are around the world, as well as online places where you can buy tools. Um, and you'd be surprised, they are a lot closer than most people think. So, hope you like this, and until next time, have a wonderful day.